Silver Sisters Like, Angel and Ali, where we are checking in on things that matter. <laughs> and today, our star guest is somebody who matters to me so much. As she, well as to me. <laughs> yes, she's a very talented actress. She's a supermodel. She is the lay delegate for the Metropolitan Founders Metropolitan Community Church here in Los Angeles. And she is my trans mom. I owe like my healthy transition from her. Part. Partially. <laughs> also, wait. Adding on, she also has a talk show every Tuesdays, every Tuesday morning. And the channel is J Harley Talks or Jarley Talks. That's J-H-A-R-L-E-E -E, Talks. And then every Tuesday, I always watch her on Charot Room. Yeah. No other than Miss. 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 Lee. Lee. Hello. Thank you for having me. Finally, I watch her show all the time when it comes out on Sundays. Thank you so much. And you're very active also on like the chat room there. It's almost like just our Charot Room. I know. Well... I know, I, I kind of stole Angel for Charot Room. So thank you, Angel, for joining us from time to time. I know. Your, no, your no, input no, is no, very no. important. So this is almost just like doing Charot Room, um, except you're with me and Ali. And we don't <laughs> have, and of course, we're missing Justine and Kim for today. But, uh, but all throughout, naman, we're, always, we're all sisters. There's like this bond of siblings between us. So, yes, all of us. Yes. It's very lovely. I'm like, it's nice to have Ali finally. Oh and my gosh. And I can't wait to join you soon as well on Charot Room on J. Yes, Harley please. Talks. Yes, please. We need you. We need your enervancy energy all the time. So <laughs> let's talk uh, about things that matter. So like the, the, one of the, the main things I introduced you as is you're the lay delegate for Founders Com Metropolitan Community Church. And that's, um, I, could, we, we all grew up in the Philippines. We all grew up in the Catholic environment. Um, I think we're all like fearful of God, you know, like all three of us. And um, so I want to talk about that because that's one of the things that pretty much a lot of like the, the ones who would say that we are sinners, that we're going to go to hell, um, those types of things. Um, I mean, maybe it's a stereotype that LGBT, we don't believe in God anymore. You want to just like start with that. Well, I think that because of um, religion sometimes, there's a lot of stigma um, towards the LGBT community, um, mm -hmm. especially now like uh, with Catholicism or with Christianity and all of that. But for me, um, especially us, I feel before even transitioning, we had a lot of introspection. So we're very in line with our own spirituality. Even before then, before Christianity was introduced to the Philippines, Catholicism for that matter was introduced to the Philippines, um, trans people have been considered as spiritual leaders. Mong bayok na babaylan in the Philippines are considered as spiritual leaders. So I feel like um, we've always had a spiritual um, connection with us. It's just a matter of being able to tap back into it and reclaim it. And change the narrative that has been like put into our heads because like that narrative has made us feel guilty of who we really are mm -hmm. authentically it's made us feel unworthy of love and you know god is love for me like that's like the biggest verse that i learned from the bible is like god is love so if i love myself then i'm respecting the god that's in me and then the more that i learn to love myself although it's still difficult because it's a process um, I learned to love other people as well, and that's being godly to them. So that's that's, that's one. Yeah, that's actually one of the things that I learned a lot um, going to Founders Metropolitan Community Church when I first met you, because mm -hmm. um, I had this notion that it's almost like if you're gonna be transitioning, or if you're trans, or if you're part of the LGBT community, then automatically you're you're a sinner. You're gonna go to hell, and it's something that you cannot repent for or whatever, you know. But um, interestingly, like as I grow up, I kind of saw how like we, we live in a loving society and God is love as what you're saying. And Jesus was actually doing, is very welcoming of everybody. Like before, yeah. remember, like race was um, something 
like like the Jews or the Gentiles or yeah. this and that, and Jesus was very welcoming of them. So um, I think we should all learn from that. Um, sure. And um, I actually had this experience also before in 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 um, in New York, like when I did my um, confession with a with a priest. It's in the Catholic Church, and um, he actually just started saying, "Why don't we do things for love?" So. Um, I think it's we're on changing times. Um, I hope the Catholic Church um, kind of catches up. Um, Founders Metropolitan Community Church is a Christian, all welcoming church, Deva, right? and they also yeah. have some in the Philippines. Yeah, non denominational Christian church founded by Reverend Troy Perry, celebrated 50 years, um, I think in 2018, of founding Metropolitan Community Church. And then from LA, it um, branched out to different countries, including the Philippines. I believe there's two or three. Don't quote me on that one. I'm not so sure. I know Open Table MCC is the one that's in um, Manila or Quezon City, I believe. And there, I think there's one in Baguio, but I'm not sure. We'll add some links on our, um, we'll confirm that information and we'll add some links on our description. But then, then if you're watching all over the country in the U.S., there's a lot of MCCs throughout the U.S., even in Brazil in Italy, in France, I might be mistaken with France, in Brazil, in um, South America, there's a lot of um, places, um, MCCs there as well, and also in Australia, so we're all over, and it's pretty cool, because like every three years, the whole denomination comes together, and then we all celebrate our spirituality together, um, it's fun to just see like different, because like, you're so what do you do as a lay delegate when you go to those um, events? Lay delegate is mostly business. So I'm like uh -huh. a part of the business of the church. So voting for leadership, knowing how, which rules or which, um, not really necessarily rules, which guidelines. Oh, it, sounds, it, it sounds to me like lay, yeah. lay is like the members. Is that so, yeah, so, so like being the lay delegate is kind of like, I am the representative of all the members of Founders Metropolitan Community Church. So basically, I don't. I'm. I'm not educated with. Um, I'm not educated. Um, I. I didn't go to school for what you call this for religion or theology. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you for putting the words in my mouth. My brain is dead. Um, <laughs> but but um, I. I'm one of the people that represent the laity or just. I mean the common folk, not the common folk. The, the laity, people. like lay falnarty. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's why I probably became a lay delegate. It was tested. <laughs> how long have you been active in the church? Like, when did you start uh, being in the church? And how long have you been serving now? And, um, and being in your role as well? Oh, my God. So, basically, as a lay delegate, I've probably only done it for three years. Um, I only ran once. But I was an alternate lay delegate for a general conference in 2016. So, overall, in total, it's four years. Now, um, I'm not planning to run again because I want somebody else to experience general conference. It's really a big thing. But I've been attending Founders since 2010 or 11, I believe. So it's been a long nine years. And what I like about Founders MCC, they say like you have to take away your bib. As a Christian, you take away your bib and, mm -hmm. put, and put on your apron. So for me, that mm -hmm. means don't be spoon-fed any more information about the Bible. Do your own due diligence to learn what it really means for you mm -hmm. so that you can live your utmost th truth and have that connection with your own higher power, the higher power of your understanding that makes you into a better human being in the process. Hopefully. Parang yung bib is like a baby na you're being spoon-fed. Tapos yes. pag naka-apron ka na, ikaw na yung nagluluto at ikaw na nag mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> oh, diba? You're teaching others to be fisher, uh, fisher of, of fisher. Yeah, not, not just like being fed fish, but you also like teach him how to exactly. fish. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, because and how to cook it and make it fabulous. <laughs> exactly. And the good thing about this one is that coming full circle, um, again, Lee is Angel's trans mother. Angel is my trans mother. So technically, Lee is my grand trans mom. <laughs> <laughs> that just gave me a hot flash, girl. I wasn't well, you know what, though? I just want to thank you all the time because whenever I go to Los Angeles, 
Lee's the one who picks me up at the airport. Lee's the one who brings me everywhere. Lee has always been uh, that person or that woman with like the biggest heart and who has so much love to give. And I just want you to know, Lee, that whenever I think of you, I just think of like the biggest heart in the world because that's how special you are to us. Yeah. Aw, thank, thank you. So I, much. I, thank <laughs> you. I don't consider myself having a big heart. I consider myself actually being the nicest biatch that you'll ever know. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, it's naturally new to be that like nurturing person, and we will we, we love you the way you are. Just so thank you know. You. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes. Thank so you much. so much for uh, yeah for for everything. Like you know, like in terms of again me being. Um, as what I said at the beginning, like I think my transition would be as healthy if I had not met you because if because when um so for those of you who doesn't know, I, again Lee is my trans mom. The first time I met Lee is when I was volunteering at, for the trans pride and I wasn't transitioned yet. I'm kind of like looking for for people to connect with, um and I met Lee and I first actually thought like why is this this gender volunteer <laughs> the trans pride because <laughs> that's how naive I was in the community but um like one of the biggest um like I was so scared about my faith also because again I thought like you're gonna go to hell automatically if you're gonna like do some changes with your body you know um yeah. and then um you also introduced me to a lot of our other friends here that are very good inspirations who have like you know real jobs um real relationships um good relationships with family um and i think i look up to all of you for that and thank you thank you thank you so much for that also to um, turn and, that to turn that around i think like the importance of like again like founders to me is it, it it does say founders community so in order for like me to be able to do the work for founders I actually really need to have community with people around me and it's nice because like Ali for instance is like such a bright light and like your energy especially like here on your sisters like Angel and Ali in your own um, YouTube video. It's so fun to watch. And I'm like, oh my God, how does she get that energy? So basically- <laughs> just seen the Vaughn. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so basically- well, for someone who's not smart, I need to do something about who I am. And that's what I can contribute. Crazy and that's, that. And that's how you're smart because you know how to use your talents, girl. That's called smart. Yes, and very creative. I know. <laughs> the original yeah. actress in the family. <laughs> An artist. And like the, the, the thing is like, I feel like I've learned so much from you. So I feel like it's not, this thing is just not one way. I'm not just a mom. I'm also a, like, I'm a student as well. I'm a student to both of you, of course. So there's, I, I just I appreciate this whole thing that but one you know, thing will always be a fact you will always be that person that we will always look up to because if not because of you so always been a good example and that's what we need in the society in our communities now are good examples you know especially for people who transition and things like that like You've been that beacon of light ever since to all of us. And until now, you still are. And not just us, but for the rest of our community. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank so you. Speaking I of trans mom, do you think that's something important for like, let's say our viewers who want to transition? Do you feel like um, finding a trans mom is important? Um, is that like a requirement for somebody who's transitioning? Has it been around for a long time? Did you have a trans mom also before? Um, What's your input on that? So I don't know necessarily if it's a requirement, but then like when I look at Pose right now or watch TV shows like Pose and then get into more of that um, entertainment industry, I just learn nuances about like having houses and families and mothers of like the houses and stuff like that. So I think, like I said, like a sense of community, it gives you a sense of community. I personally did not have a trans mom, but I was able to go to the LA LGBT Center and I found a therapy group for um, trans individuals, trans non-binary, gender non-conforming people. So being able to be part of that community, trying to go through the process, regardless of where you are throughout that transition, I feel it's important because 
you need to surround people yourself with people that would help you become the best version of you that you can become. Mm -hmm. So basically I feel like family is important and it doesn't matter if you're, if you have a trans mom, like, I guess that's why it it was, it's nice that you still consider me your trans mom because like I never had a trans Uh mom, but I had a family. I had a sister that supported me. I had a father that supported me. So So I think it sounds like the, the, the most important thing is having that support. Yeah. Um, may it be a trans mom or a mentor or um, like support groups, like finding out. Like I know in the Philippines, we just spoke with um, somebody who's a member of Lad Lad and Strap. So like, you know, and yeah. I guess they also have like community groups and meetings there. And then let's say here in the U.S. or in California at the LGBT Center, you know, there's like, um, in Apicha in New York, you know, there's a lot of like support groups out there. And then of course the media now has a lot of um, support also like, for example, us like Charot Room, I think you also created that so that we can have a venue of like talking about different things that trans people like go Experience, through yeah. similar to us here, um, you know, in Sisters Like Angel and Alley and, and whatever like original content we've been doing, you mentioned about posts and all of these other um, entertainment industry. Um, information yeah. that's available now that we didn't have before that's why i feel yeah. like it's so important to kind of have that go to and thank you for being that again uh, <laughs> we love you lee yeah. i love you all too i mean it's it, I, I i i can't i can't be any happier to just see you all and just like look to see what you do because like again you inspire a lot of people and i think you're going to continue to inspire more people in the future so Thank you for everything that you guys have done. Well, thank you for supporting. for all of us. Oh, my God. (laughs) And thank you for supporting our show and always being there on our live chat, which speaking of on our, like, episode two weeks ago with Jackie Barris, one of the things you mentioned was, like, something super difficult to actually, um, because we were talking about, let's say, LaSalle Greenhills going co-ed. And one of the, the, the things that you mentioned on the chat room is, do you feel like, binary is still something that they should be kind of correct me if I'm wrong like should be promoted in schools because um or you know so what's your take on that did you have something to say on that um I thought I just really wanted to find out because you know how sometimes you I, you might feel lost if you go to a exclusive school for a certain gender because you won't have people that you can relate to. So sometimes it's just probably, and also I feel like it gives, it, this is going to be hard to explain and it's such a long topic. So my, let me just like let's try start, Let's back up with like the basic thing. What's binary? It's kind of like, um, what's, what do you mean by binary when you use that on that question? When I mean binary, I just mean like thinking of gender as black and white. So mm-hmm. all like there's masculinity and there's uh-huh. femininity and nothing right. in between. So I f- like, I feel like if uh, my thoughts were just, if you t- try to promote a binary in school, maka- there's still going to be malice. Makakaroon pa rin ng mali siya sa tingin sa opposite, sa, like somebody from, like that has a different gender, blah, 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 this and that. And also, it's hard to really know the different types of genders if you classify it as two. So like when you encounter somebody who has, uh, who identifies as like, for example, non-binary or trans or butch trans, like mm-hmm. something that you're like, wait, what? It's like your notion, like your brain, especially like as a kid, it's already been developed. So like now you're going to have to wrap through this and it's going to be difficult again to like with us, like with our religion, like with religion and Catholicism, it's what we didn't get fixed overnight. We, it was like a lot of years of unpacking. I don't so know. Let for me, me, um, for me, so let's say, like let that. me go to the basic of first grade. Um, cause that's when I learned about, let's say the roles of each family member, you know, like the mom is the person who cooks, takes, yeah. takes care of the house. Ilo ng tahanan. Um, so in, in effect, 
who is not really working. <laughs> and then the dad is the one who provides for the family. Because this is how we, I think that's, that's how I remember being taught like in first grade, you know, that the dad is the ones who provide for the family. Siya yung lalaki ng tahan, you know, siya yung, um, and then the ate will be the one who will help the mom, kind of, who also learn how to cook. And then the kuya will be the one who's going to help the dad, like, you know, this and that. Um, and then the bunso, actually, which is, I guess, the non-binary individual. Because <laughs> the bunso is like, they keep the, the family happy. I, I think that's how I remember it. I don't know. Parang ganyan din sa inyo? Do you remember? I think I think so. You gan nag naging ganon yung role ng sister ko. Cause my mom um, went to America at age six, so my sister be- became that person. Um, so is that example the binary that you're talking about on how it's being promoted in schools? And what do you think about also, how could they like change it, especially about the moms and dads who are out there who maybe want to be more open na, na yung kids nila on what they're gonna teach them? Is that something that they should still be teaching? that specific one or i think i think it's going to be hard because it's the philippines don't you think um a country that is so ingrained with um colonization and catholicism it's hard to change that thought process pero ngayon like women are working i know a lot of female friends who are actually earning more than the spouses you know yeah, women uh, back home in the philippines are very successful yeah, yeah. I, and then I even mean, at church like when i went to a wedding like basically they mentioned about like you know how like they passed the coin on sa, mm-hmm. ano, sa, sa catholic church wedding na parang oh ikaw ang magpo-provide for the family at ibibigay mo siya dun sa asawa mo and yung asawa mo okay, Parang, alam mo yun, it's kind of like, it's super binary. Like, that's kind of, at least that's what comes to my mind when you're saying that we promote it and we condition people in the Philippines. Yeah, I mean... Even though, really, equality between both genders also, regardless if it's binary or like, or somewhere in between, it should I be mean, equal. For me, I feel like it's more like, don't get stuck on that way if that's what you know just don't try to get stuck on that way because for somebody that doesn't feel that way sila yung kinukutsa sila yung ina other sila yung ginigilt you know what i mean and that feel, i feel like that's not trying to say like i'm better than you because i am doing the stereotypical whatever is supposed to be um thought of me because of gender norms mm-hmm. i think it's like something that i kind of want to break so that it, hindi 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 mo iisipan ng masama kung yung tata yung nasa bahay taking care of the kids mm-hmm. and the mom is the one that's working yung mga ganun ba or like if uh, a, a a young boy picks up a barbie doll hindi mo na iisipin kaagad na oy baklayan or something what if they just really like playing with barbie dolls i mm-hmm. mean not all hair and makeup artists are you know, are in the LGBTQ community yeah. and are all cis um, and are all like gay or trans or whatnot. You know what I mean? Okay, so, so I what, guess, yeah. Ali. So Lee, what's your take on back in the Philippines that the LGBTQ there, it's basically widely recognized by majority of the Filipinos, yet we're not politically recognized by the government. So what's your take on that? Um, I mean, it's hurtful because I've been affected by it in a way. Like, I've been affected on it in a way. That's why um, when the opportunity came that we were able to find somebody from the Philippines who actually is part of a LGBTQ party and also part of an organization that helps trans women, I took and I jumped to the opportunity to talk to them so that I, I could know, find out their perspective. Like, I feel like I've been here long too long to know what's actually going home in the like going on in right. the Philippines, and I have no experience of it because I transitioned here and not in the Philippines. So it's totally different for me. And I hope, I hope that there's a way that they get more respect and traction. And like, I think education is a really, really big thing in the Philippines yeah. that has to change because it starts there. I feel like um, I I think like what we're doing, we're talking about it. It's such a big topic, you know. Um, I I mean, obviously, we we identify as trans women, so we kind of want that feminine side also. So, so it's 
I think being open to all the the different spectrum is good. Um, anyways, the alarm already went off, so um, I we kind of have to start wrapping up. Um, do you have Lee any other specific things that you want to add up on the topics that we discussed today? Like just quick. Um, follow me on Instagram, Lee zero six five, and then follow Charot. <laughs> I mean, watch Miss Charlie talks in Miss Charot room, and then whenever you can find. Um, Black Lives Matter, like people that of like black descent, like amplify their voices and try to listen to what they're trying to teach. Whenever you um, meet trans individuals, try to listen to their voices and amplify and don't like don't negate what they're saying just because it's different from what you believe and just try to recognize that they have a different lived experience than you. That makes sense. And then before um, you go, um, we usually ask everybody to give us three tips because you're so beautiful and you look so healthy. Yes! And it looks like you do self-care. So we want a tip from each one of those. So beauty, health, and self-care. Self-care. Okay, so I'm just going to give you just the tip. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, for beauty, I feel like everything is interconnected for beauty. I, I got so into the 10 step, uh, the 10 step skincare, Korean skincare routine that for beauty, you can just Google it. It's a long, long steps. it's a long process to explain. You can Google it. It's not always 10 steps, but I just love doing it because me taking, doing that at night or in the morning is a so, so, uh, sort of meditation process for me. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like I'm pampering myself at the same time. So I feel like it's also self care. Um, for health, I try to exercise all the time. But at the same time, like if you have healthy thoughts in your brain, um, if you have a healthy mind, a healthy heart, then you'll also have a healthy body. So I feel like everything is interconnected. Um, I feel like you need to be really gentle with yourself. Acknowledge if you're feeling mad, if you're feeling lonely, if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling worn out. Don't try to change that feeling. Try to accept it. Try to find ways in order to cope with that feeling, but not feel guilty that you're actually feeling it because all of us feel that way. Just be authentic with those feelings and just be gentle that at that moment you're feeling that and not be mad at yourself that you're feeling that because I feel like a lot of people are trying to always be like happy, successful, joyful, blah, 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 and this and that. And sometimes that creates like a brain thing. Is right. that self-care also that's kind of intertwined already? Yeah, I, I feel like it's just like all different. But like, again, it's all the same. Just like be true to yourself and do whatever you want as long as you're not harming anybody. And also educate yourself. <laughs> that's nice. Well, I'm also going to promote Starlet Diner. It's on Amazon Prime. I've never promoted it before. And I think I should also promote that. Plus, again, Charot Room on J. Harley Talks on YouTube. Um, so, Ali, anything you want? Any last words? Anything you want to promote? And you can close the show. Because we... Yes. Yes, you well, I... <laughs> Well, I just really want to thank all of you um, who's, who, who've been supporting us, you know, all of us, like sisters like Angel and Ali, uh, Charlie Talks, Charot Room. Thank you for like being with us, the trans community itself. Um, the reason why we're doing this is because um, we want to bring forth to the world that we too have so much love to give. And we too have so much gifts to share. And, and that's really what this is all about. And that's, what, that's why we're doing this. And, um, and also speaking of plugging, I hope you can also support me on Alley Cat Castle, um, where it's like a channel that's about like um, primarily 80% um, beauty, 10% um, singing, and 10% a little bit of like a food vlog. But overall, our purpose here is to bring all of you love. Can and I close in prayer? <laughs> yes, please. I would like that. Okay, I'm going to sing something. This has been like in my heart. So I just want to share this with you. Yeah. You know my name. Yes, you know my name. You know my name. Yes, you know my name. You know how you walk with me. You know how you talk with me. 
and oh how you and you and you tell me that I am your own. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. Oh my God. <laughs> thank you very much. And again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed our episode today. We have new episodes every Sundays. Um, we go live 6 p.m. Los Angeles time, 9 p.m. Um, Eastern time, which is the Washington DC or New York City area, and also Philippines 9 a.m. But the videos are available pretty much anytime after that. It's just that we're also there to chat live with you every Sundays at that time. Um, again, this is Angel. And this is Ali. And today we had Miss Lipa Elnardo. Yes. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone.